Hey everyone, I'm Greg Tatum. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, my session number two for the 2D session series um, called Follow Your Buddy. And uh, first off, I thought it'd be interesting to show how I kind of manage my projects. Uh, I've written a script, uh, a start script that will go through a directory and look for all of the folders that start with a number and let me choose which session to run. This is an easy way for me to get back into where I was working before. This uses Budo to um, manage all the live reloading of everything. If I refresh this page, I'll be back uh, to be able to look at the visualization again. So I'll talk, start talking about how all this works. So this is the file to handle everything. And I have a config that handles all of my static values or dependencies that I've created, and then I have the current mutable state of everything, which in this case is all my entities. Uh, and then I have a loop to go through and update them and to draw them. And let's dive into it. So first off, we'll look at how I generate everything. Uh, I destructure the values I'm interested in, which is entity count, and then I have a pseudo random number generator, which lets me do things reproducibly. Um, if I want, <laughs> this one doesn't really matter quite as much. Um, and kind of the interesting part here is that I pick buddy. So this is how this visualization works. It looks like a Boyd's algorithm, uh, but it's not. It's, it's a, uh, I, each of these entities tries to follow a buddy, uh, except I create some breakout entities because the initial vis visualization felt too unif uniform for me. Uh, so if I restart this, you can see all of these kind of congregating together. It makes these interesting loop patterns, and this one's more interesting than some, uh, but it tends to stay static, and I wanted to change that up. And so I created some of these kind of rogue, lonely entities that don't have a buddy. And they break out, and uh, i trying to see if I can find one. This is probably one here that is just kind of ran, randomly walking around. And it helps break up uh, these entities from being too packed together. Uh, let's see here. So the, one of the values we saw here was entity count. So you can see how that changes based on how many I have. So here's a much smaller entity count um, to be able to see how this, how this changes with that. But of course, I like big numbers. So let's do 10,000 and see how that if it runs on my computer at all. It's just just kind of chaotic. I think I need 2,000. And then I have an entity size, which is in the draw function. Kind of makes things crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the reason why I collect all these here is I like to be able to tweak the values to create the vis visualization that I think will be interesting. But I also, a lot of, a lot of creative coders let people tweak these values. I tend to like to keep them to myself. And uh, <laughs> you can you can clone the repo and play with them yourself if you want. But um, I think part of the interest interesting thing is to build some tools and then tweak the values to be able to uh, do the things that I wanted to do. So it's, it's more like drawing that way for me. So the draw function, first I clear the background um, and then draw each entity which is a fairly simple um, simple function. Uh, the only craziest thing is computing some the rotation, which I use cosine and sine and the theta for each of the entities to create a change in x and y value and then move the lines to do that. Uh, the other thing trick I'm using is this three right here represents the opacity of the background. Uh, so I don't make it fully opaque. If I did, they'd be straight lines which is you know, cool, but just a slightly different aesthetic. So I like having that little trail behind. Uh, and then I skip the update function, so we'll go back to that. Update. Again, destructure the stuff I'm interested in. And I go through all the entities, and here this first thing sees if there's a buddy or not. If there's not a buddy, it applies a random rotation using simplex noise. So it sets the theta value of the entity, based off the simplex, which is a value between negative one and one, and then multiplies it by pi, so it's the full rotation route amount. And so you can see this entity here is one of the lonely ones. <clears throat> so it's moving, and 
there's uh, at least one entity circling it, trying to follow it. And you can see a few more entities circling this one, trying to follow that one. Otherwise, it applies a buddy force, which is a wonderful function name. So applying the buddy force, it's a bit of math. Uh, but the magic is right here is I lerp, which is linear interpolation. And I wrote a custom one that handles theta values uh, because theta values go between zero and and two, two pi. Um, but then I rotate it according to rotate to buddy. And uh, so just basically, if one entity is going this way and the buddy is over here, it slowly tweaks it every frame, just point at the buddy. But that's what creates these circular patterns is it can't quite meet up with its buddy. Um, kind of reinforces there. So let's look at rotate to buddy, which is kind of the magic value here, the speed at which they rotate. So we'll make it uh, rotate a lot faster. So this will create <laughs> much uh, tighter collections of entities, which I haven't done this yet. So that's kind of fun. I enjoy that. Uh, kind of bizarre. And then make them much looser to where it's hard for them to track. So right now it's extremely chaotic. I don't know if it will resolve itself to not be just absolutely chaotic. Again, all these magic values, I try to tune to make the visualization interesting. That's apply buddy force. And then the rest of it's kind of, this one applies the maximum speed um, and applies speed um, here. Uh, I think I'm actually not tweaking the speed anymore, but I was playing with those values for a bit. Um, and then I keep the entities on, on the page and that's, that's pretty much all the code that, that runs this. Uh, I really like messing with kind of these entity systems where you apply some rules where they know about each other. They can get really expensive really quickly because a lot of times you want to ask the question of, um, this entity needs to know about every other single entity. So I tried to simplify the problem a bit by just having them know about one other entity and being able to look at what kind of system this would create and with the rotations and how everything happens. Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with, with the results here. Uh, thanks for taking the time to look at this video um, and have a good one.